I'm just going to do a quick box opening here. I've already started. I want to show you what this is about. This was packed pretty well as I asked. This is a parts unit. It has, it has some issues, but uh, at least they use styrofoam like I asked. But it's a turntable. It's a Philips GA212. I'll get it unpacked and have you take a look at it. Okay, here we are. And this, like I said, this turntable is a wreck. But for the price of this turntable, or for the price of what some folks, uh, the chop shopper eBay's, uh, try to sell this piece and a, and a bracket and a hinge for $29 or, or the light panel for $29, all the power to them. But I got the whole thing for less than the asking price of some of the piece parts these people are trying to sell. In any event, uh, what's unique about this turntable, why I like it, this has uh, there's a few features. Let me go into some of the uh, pitfalls it already has. Um, the power switches fail, and I, I hope maybe it's inside, but like I say, this is a donor machine. The head shell here is a, has seen better days. The, uh, the tone arm holder is, is broke. Um, I don't know what this piece here is. This this here is residue from the belt. When the belt goes on these, it turns into that tarry, tarry, disgusting, uh, almost like a tar. This, uh, and I'm sure this has this disease. This platter lifts off. What I like about this, let me get into the features here. It has the uh, floating suspension, which is nice. And uh, when I first saw this in the 70s, I was amazed at the uh, the green lights here. You just capacitive touch these to change the speeds and you can adjust the speeds. Uh, has a lightweight tone arm and uh, what else did I want to mention? The the most important thing I like is at the end of play this is not an auto return or, or anything like that it just simply there's a there's a electric eye in there and a light bulb with an early CDS cell uh, version of a, of a light sensor when it gets to the lead out groove the turntable simply just stops. There's no drag on the tone arm, there's no trip lever, there's none of that. The record just glides to the end and, and that's the end of it. Now, like I say, this one has a cracked dust cover. It has a cracked dust cover, the power switch, the head shell, and uh, the tone arm rest here is is broken. Um, I can lift this platter off one-handed here, I can show you underneath and why I have this one to repair mine. Now you can see the old belt that is like tar. You don't even want to touch that. There's the top of our head shell which is nice and the power switch is probably inside. So you need a lot of paper towels and uh, rubber gloves to try and get this this belt off of here which is nice. It actually kept the uh, the goo the goo is and it's it's still it's all out of solution it's like tar you get this on you it stays on you for days um, but there's our head shell that goes right here I won't place it on there but it goes on there so we have our head shell this is what um, now I see uh, takes me back to what uh, is wrong with the current one I'm going to use this one to figure out what is what is wrong with the one I own? If you look at a video I did, oh, some time ago, one of my first ones was, uh, I think it's uh, Dean Martin, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, playing on my other turntable like this. And uh, what that turntable does, uh, initially one of the bulbs is blown, was blown, and you need these bulbs. They're intricate, po intricate part of the circuit, and they're a strange milliamp. I forget what they draw. Uh, 600 milliamps or something like that, but the bulbs have to draw the uh, right amount of current for you to be able to uh, change the speeds and have the circuit work. It won't work without the bulbs. And uh, there's someone on eBay that sells the bulbs, whatever. Uh, I, I just found some cross-reference lamps to put in there. Um, but what mine does is it starts off slow. When you start the player, it'll start slow, a few percent slow, and then within a minute's time, it comes right up to speed, and it stays locked on speed. I want to use this one to see if it has the same disease. There's a germanium transistor here, and the boards inside have all those European-style capacitors in there and transistors. The stripes on the capacitors that I, I'm going to have to look at an international European uh, standard to figure out the... Uh, values but there's something wrong with the circuitry in our turntable it works fine 
but it, I don't like the fact it takes a minute or so for it to get up to speed. I want to see if this one gets right up to speed from the get-go, and I don't know if it's the motor. That's the issue, because there isn't much of a motor here, but it does have like five leads coming out of it, so it's got some kind of tack or servo, synchro or something built into that, that the electronic circuitry monitors. So uh, that's it, that's the uh, Philips 212 turntable from on or about 1975. Okay, so for now we'll call that a wrap. Like I said, I hope, like the uh, head shell here, uh, I hope the power switch just fell inside. So once we use this to uh, figure out what's wrong with our turntable, we perhaps could get this one going after just a little bit of work. Uh, thanks for watching.